This is the Wealth Standard Radio, your gold standard in everything financial. Hi, everyone. This is Patrick Donahoe of the Wealth Standard Radio. We are on episode 177, and this is going to be it for 2016. And there's no better person to sign off with than the man, the myth, and the legend, Mr. Chunga. Jimmy hey, Chunga. Hey, man. How's it I going? Get, this is becoming, uh, this is, you know, I'm going to feel slighted now when you start doing podcasts without me. I thought you you're know? not going to continue to do a podcast with me? No, I would love to. Oh, okay. I, I would okay. love to do it. Yeah, it's... Uh, but we have some cool plans in store for 2017. Big plans. A full redesign yeah. of the wealth standard. Yeah. We are redesigning absolutely everything. Everything's changing with the exception of the host, Patrick Donahoe. Uh, we have, uh, we've been growing in leaps and bounds as far as, uh, our subscription rate and our follows. Mm -hmm. And, and we'd like to encourage everybody to spread the word and tell everybody what a great podcast this is, mm -hmm. because, uh, as we go into next year, uh, Patrick is going to be talking with all kinds of great guests. Uh, the wealth standard is going to have a completely new website. We're going to have contests and surveys and all kinds of ways, uh, for you to give us feedback about how we can make the wealth standard better. Yeah. Cause we typically, we just get on here and just talk about stuff we like to talk about. We free associate <laughs> about the world, man. But we, yeah, but we want to get we want to get good feedback because in the end, there's lots of topics that you know interest me and intrigue me that I love to talk about. But at the same time, you know, I'd love to know what everybody else is thinking and love to comment and provide value in any way that we we can. So that's that was one of the objectives, which is listen, we need to have more engagement, more interaction. We need to know what what's going on in people's minds and their finances, and figure out a way to just bring content that's going to be the most valuable. Well. We are in a time in history where we are all the the byproduct or subjected to, depending on how you look at it, of immense change. Yeah, there is so much about our world, about our nation, and about uh, business in general, uh, the corporate world in general, that is changing so quickly that. Uh, 2017 uh, is going to be a great year for the Well Standard because yeah. we have so much to talk about. Well, there's, I mean, disruption. There's a, there's two ways to look at it. You know, disruption sometimes is painful for people that ch you know, change is very difficult. But I think those the longer that you resist change, I think it's you know going to get more and more painful, right? And so I think you look really at our disruptive society uh, and it's a good thing. We're always trying to innovate, do better, be better, uh, make it for less. Uh, stretch the dollars, stretch the efficiency, stretch energy. I mean, there's it's, it's just amazing just a lot of the innovation that's taking place. And it's really, you know, it's it's catching people off guard to an extent where there's new this and new that and you can do this thing and you have this app and it's crazy, right? Well, yeah, and I don't know, you know, I don't know where you're at. I've, I've always kind of fancied myself as somebody who's really good at uh, being comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's how that's how I tell myself I am. But the truth is, is that I like being comfortable. <laughs> I like being very comfortable. And so uh, as as this year has kind of progressed, it's been a rough year for a lot of people. It's yeah. been a very challenging year for, mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, you have gone through immense change. I've gone yeah. through immense yeah. change. Uh, and the, the line that has been kind of prevalent throughout this year for me is this famous line from Winston Churchill where he said, we must let go the treasures of the past and embrace the challenge and compromises of the future or something mm -hmm. to that to that extent and uh, and I think that 2017 is going to be very challenging but I also think it's going to be really cool no. and to quote Jason Hartman it's a hey Jason uh, <laughs> it's a it's a great time to be alive no it is you know yeah and I, I think you know looking at 2016 and I guess this this podcast is kind of to, to wrap up this this year you know it's it's one of those things where it's it's always a new year there's always new challenges always new opportunities and this year you know was definitely there's tons of change at at paradigm uh right. and we went through you know a, a cycle of a marketing team and now we have some amazing people that are running the show geniuses and you know genius it, it, marketing team <laughs> but it's also you know our you know our, our clients clients client tastes uh you know change what they're doing to consume information and you know it's 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 a always changing environment and so you know there's some things that you know most people get in the habit of doing and that's where human beings like comfort they like they like to Boy, I do. Be, they like to you know know they like to have some sort of expectation or some some element of certainty to their expectations and that's why you know when something is not according to expectations people get very very upset and and i and i think that you know i i got used to that years ago 
I'm no by no means a master at it, but this year there were a lot of things that caught me off guard and it made me think and reevaluate and but it's good to How did you, you know, handle it? How do, well, how do you feel you handled it? Well, I think it, you know in the end it's like your your natural human reaction is is always, you know, the the emotional the emotional side of things. And I, I and I've gotten in trouble with that before, right? Where I would jerk and you know, knee jerk reaction to something. He's a hockey player. He's a hockey yeah. player. I mean you and you have those instincts, right? But right, sure. but and in the end you really look at it and you evaluate it and understand what you can control and what you can influence. And the idea behind control is like you can't you can't necessarily control all of the outcomes, but you can control the way in which you respond to them. Yeah. And and that's where I kind of, you know, tried to focus this year and you know give you a, a example a couple of days ago where you know my 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 wife bless bless her soul she uh you know my <laughs> i always my love daughter, that whenever you tell a story and it starts with bless her soul you know it's not gonna go well <laughs> but it's you know she she uh, <laughs> but again it's just to prove the point i mean the, so you know she my my daughter like she couldn't my wife was in the car they were late to an appointment she had to f- get something in the house and was punching on the keypad and couldn't figure it out. And Cynthia was like, ah. She, Everything she, locks up. So she, she got out of the car, but left the car and drive. She got out of the car to try oh to my gosh. unlock. Left the car and drive. Drive. You know, we have a kind of a steep driveway. Car backed out into the, you know, the street. She dinged up the door. And so it's, w- it's kind of really? like, you know, what's the natural reaction to that? It's like, well, you should, why don't you be more careful? Why don't you? Yeah. So it's one of those things where, yeah. you know, it, it happened and. It's okay. You laugh it off, and it's it's just one of those things where you know when you face the when you face life like that, yeah, and you don't get caught up in the irrational emotional side of things, uh, your outcomes are are different. And there's no it's there's there's no time to waste with stuff with stuff like that. And I and I say that say, thinking that you know I'm, I always react the way that I did a couple of days ago. Right. No, I, I mean of course that's not that true. But at the same time, I, I think I'm able to catch myself. I and bet I think you were that's, probably just happy she was okay more than yeah, anything. Oh, for sure. And, yeah. And my and 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 uh, Megan, but it's the right. the idea though is you know you go back to like a 2009 2010. Look at how much you know change and disruption negatively impacted people. Right now you've had consumer sentiment going up and up and up and up and up. You have the Dow going up and up and S and P and I mean the just Fed everything just raised up. rates a quarter percent. Yeah, so you look you look at just you know right now everything's kind of cool and yeah. you know there's there's a uh, you know some some speculation as far as what's going to happen during the holiday season with uh you know shopping that's going to be positive mm-hmm. uh, i think yes a couple days ago gdp came out and third quarter that you know three and a half percent or three point something i mean that's that's really really good right now everything is good when pe- when things are good people get complacent yeah. right and they think oh well if it's this way now I'm, I'm just going to get in the habit of assuming that that's what's going to be in the future. Right. And and I think that's dangerous. And I, I think we saw proof of that in what happened in 2009, 2010, where people irrationally reacted to a lot of financial changes. Well, yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm still dealing with some of that fallout. Yeah. From 2009. It was really 2009, 2010. I'm still dealing with that. A lot of people still are. Yeah. And, and I would say... Those that those that still remember that, I think, have a, an upper hand into what's uh, what's going to come in the future. Now, it's not going to be the same thing, uh, but there are bubbles. There's a lot of debt, and Trump's going in. He has new initiatives, and things are going to change. I mean, change is inevitable, right? But I would say that even more change, because of a lot of the changing dynamics of our society, our uh, political environment, and even our international presence, yeah. lots of things are going to change. And if you're not you know, if you're not ready for that, then it's it's going to be uh, a diff. It's going to be a difficult time. But if you are ready for that, you're going to be able to think rationally. You're going to be able to react and take advantage of opportunities because that's that that's the thing. It's like when those events occur, you have irrational people that create opportunities for rational people. You know, that's you almost answer the question I was going to ask you. Uh, Tr- Todd Tresseter last week brought up a really interesting point. And if you haven't heard that episode, yeah, go, check uh, it out. go check it out. Yeah, Pat did a great interview with uh, with this guy, Todd Tresseter, who's a financial uh, mentor. And and to be honest, you two are in, in many ways polar opposites. Mm-hmm. You guys are on total opposite ends of the spectrum as mm-hmm. far as your philosophy goes. Mm-hmm. But you found an awful lot that you could agree on. And mm-hmm. it really is a great interview. The audio is a little wacky, but uh, well worth the listen. 
Uh, but he brought up uh, something about real estate. He made a mention, and I remember this so clearly, which was real estate never goes down. It never depreciates. Mm-hmm. You never see real estate take a loss ever. And then sure enough, yeah. it did. And everybody had to adjust. And everybody, when the bubble burst, everybody had to yeah. uh, had to compensate for that. And I'm taking a look going into seven, uh, 2017 going, okay, what is... Maybe I'm being too pessimistic, but, but 2016 was that hard for yeah. a lot of people. So what's going to happen in 2017? What are we going to face? Um, you know, you talked about the bond bubble being an issue. Yeah. Uh, do you have any advice? I love throwing Pat curveballs on this. Do you have any <laughs> advice for people to watch uh, anything that they may want to watch for? Mm-hmm. Now, again, a full disclaimer: I'm throwing Pat a curveball here. I, you know, we've done no research on this, but nope. uh, <laughs> but uh, what what advice can you give people to watch for maybe in the first quarter of 2017? Well, first quarter, I mean, Trump Trump's going in, you know, the end of January. And so the, the first quarter is I think there's going to be an extra ear to what he says. And I think he's going to okay. say a lot. So you're going to see a lot of knee jerking because people are exactly, maybe hypersensitive to what he's doing. Exactly. So I think that, you know, look at how markets reacted to his, you know, his his uh, his win a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Okay, They well, I guess a month ago. They they re- it reacted in an opposite way of what people thought. They, I mean, they skyrocketed. So yeah. I, I think you look at you know what the expectations of uh, of him are, and I would say that they are going to take a lot of what he says literally, and the the markets are going to react be because of that. And you know, I, I would say. It's going to be, you know, pay attention to that. If there's going to be news that you pay attention to, it's not, it's not necessarily why he's saying what he's saying, but it's what he's saying. Okay. Because okay? what he's okay. saying is going to to move things. It's gonna it's gonna move it's gonna move the needle, right? Because that's typically what an influential person does, right? Sure. They move they move a needle whether you like it or or not. I so, call them taste makers. Yeah. <laughs> they determine what the taste is. Yeah, but know? I think but I think you know there's going to probably be some not much change in the first year. It's not like you can wave a magic wand. Similar to Obama. Obama didn't wave a magic wand and things happened, but I still think that you know what he's intending on doing is what people should pay attention to, and that's the that's first quarter. But at the same time, I think you know you look at 20, 2017 and I don't know, it's it's one of those things where keeping on top of whether it's political trends or technology trends yeah. uh, or uh, opportunities to be a business owner or an entrepreneur, I don't think there's any better time in history we're kind of in the wild west right now a little for, bit. for sure and I, but i think there's a tremendous amount of of opportunity and i think 2017 is where you're going to see volatility that'll just present opportunities to either get assets undervalued or to form partnerships or you know it just any any really anything to make a, a further step toward you know sort of improving your financial situation i the think entrep- those opportunities will exist the entrepreneurial side of me says hey you know let's stomp on the gas be mm-hmm. as aggressive as you can be mm-hmm. heading into 2017, yep. uh, because you're going to have that change no matter what. So you can you can hold back and deal with someone else's change, or you can create your own. Yeah, is that is that nuts to think that? No, I, I mean I think and I think that's always the case, and I think nowadays it's easier than it. It's I won't say the 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 idea behind creating something that's within you as a business. But I would say the process to do it, whether it's marketing or getting the word out uh, or creating an audience, creating a presence, uh, being a thought leader, it is it, the process is easier today than it's ever been. Connecting with people is really what makes the world go round. And this is you know something I try to teach my my girls is relationships are are everything, okay? And you may not like somebody, but, the same time that relationship could be very very valuable to you so you should never ever have any type of you know negativity associated with relationships and right now I you know my 12 year old she's kind of going through different different you know transition and it's it's hard for her but at the same time you know I've been trying to beat that into him for not you know beat that into him you know get really <laughs> And, and, and they get, and they, and for the most part, they, you know, they, they do a good job. They, yeah. they do a good job kind of understanding that. But I would say right now you can connect with, you know, literally millions and millions of people for, I would say zero, zero expense or very nominal expense. That's very true. And, and, and the end people are what's going to create a successful entrepreneur because if an entrepreneur or business owner can create value, right? The true value is something people are willing to pay for. And right now, those people are everywhere. So really looking out in the environment and in society and what is lacking, uh, what is a friction point or a choke point, those are, those are, that's, that's an environment that is 
ripe right now. So going out and figuring out a way to solve those issues, Mm -hmm. make life easier, make processes easier, uh, reduce friction, uh, unclog bottlenecks. That That's is a great it, way to start any year, especially a year like 2017. Yeah, for sure. So, so do you have any goals? What are your goals for 2017? 2017, man. I'm do you trying want to, to share finish off 2000s. I have, so, so Cynthia and I are going. We we usually do like a little uh, two to three day outside of the family, outside of the home. So we're yeah we're doing that the nice. uh, the first weekend of of January to set our our personal goals. But oh great, yeah. But we've you know it, this this year has been it's been it's been kind of a, a crazy crazy year. It has. One of my goals is to to travel a lot a lot less to do more podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> do more <laughs> do more remote things as opposed uh, to physical things. Nice. Um, but yeah, I, I would say you know in two thousand in two thousand seventeen. I mean we have a goal here to do uh, five uh, virtual summits. Right, so we're going to do them on topics like tax, topics on uh, real estate, uh, business ownership, entrepreneurism, uh, and probably marketing too. But then our full-on cash flow wealth summit this uh, this summer, uh, early, early in the summer, most likely, we're we're really stoked. Well, and those, stoked those for that. virtual summits. Uh, if uh, if you're listening to the Wealth Standard now and you have not taken part in these Paradigm Life virtual summits yet, these things are an absolute goldmine, and uh, and are available. Uh, so easily. I mean, you could sit in your jammies with a cup of coffee and and get uh, you know, what I consider to be priceless yep. information yep. Uh, right there on your computer screen. So uh, you want to and right now it is literally priceless. Yeah, we're, yeah, it's free, <laughs> but not for. But we're not. Yeah, that that's something I discovered. One of my lessons this year is that you know when you give away something for free. It, people don't value it. It doesn't have the weight. Yeah, of the so value that's to gonna it. that's gonna end probably in a in a couple of weeks. So you might as well yeah, you might as well go on and see the presentations you can. But we do have some that are still available on demand right now. Yeah, I think most um, of the most of the couple of years are are on there. So go check that out. Uh, definitely, and and you're definitely gonna want to follow these uh, these summits. These five that we're gonna do. I know that the ones that we did this in 2016. Uh, with the feedback I'm getting on these things were they were they were life changing for a mm. lot of people. Mm. Uh, if they if you institute the changes and you institute some of the strategies that were that were made available as per your own individual life, mm. uh, they they really will help you. Yep. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to what these things have to offer in 2017. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, it's sure. gonna be it's gonna be cool. I mean, we're getting better and better every time we do one of these, and so yeah, we have some ambitious plans for next year. But another thing too is you know th- this year I would say 2015 and 2016 was it was interesting because a lot of my, you know, friends and and a lot of clients, you know, they have been having family challenges, and so sure. I've been thinking a long time about, you know, really creating some sort of a, a financial course or curriculum for for a family, uh, and, well, and so that's going to be yeah. So we're gonna we're in the process of creating that right now, and that's something that I really want to focus on because my kids are getting to the age where it's like, you know, they're they're gonna be gone in a few in a few years, and mm-hmm. really the uh, the fundamentals of money right now are more important than ever before because now they understand what economy is they understand what exchanges and really i, I want to make sure that what i've you know, taught them throughout the years is ingrained in uh in, in them going forward when they kind of get into their you know more prominent years so i so th- so i would have basically take you know a lot of what i learned from books and courses and mistakes and kind of and a lot of yeah specifically the mistakes right yeah. but what i've seen in you know other families and their challenges and really package it together uh in a in a way where everybody can you know go on there and, and create some sort of structure from you know just like a, a mission driven standpoint but also a financial standpoint so family i'm excited i'm excited is- to release that probably first quarter well and it's so challenging because the needs of the family change from year to year what you needed last year you don't need next year and so on and so forth yep. and so it's uh it, it i i'd say in many respects it's actually more challenging than than say corporate financial planning because yeah. corporations move a lot slower for sure in, in most cases but so. families are families are on the move always constantly and organization and structure you know like i always say it's you know structure and organization can can make you free or it can can confine you and so i but i would say it's depending on the person how it's set up and who has control over it so that's what we get into it'll be it'll be a kind of a cool course i'm really excited really excited to get that finished uh and uh and i know that you're working on a book yeah I've been working on the, a book for book for, is... for years but yeah i think this this will be the year that we we get it out can you tell i keep hoping patrick's gonna go yeah the book this year the book the book the book yeah. it, from what i've heard it's gonna be fantastic well yeah so it wasn't before so that's that's why it didn't come out <laughs> I, I looked at him like no i just don't i just I was, wasn't feeling it and so so we've yeah i've made a bunch of modifications and we're working on that too so yeah. with your yeah with your help and 
Everybody hears yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a, it'll be a cool project to get I, finished. I got, I got big hopes for 2017, and and I want to remind everybody tell spread the word for us because yeah. the well standard. Uh, we want this thing to be a beast. Mm-hmm. We want this to be a great source of information and interactivity. And frankly, when you're looking to waste some time at work, uh, we want to have a lot of different things for you to do on the wellstandard.com. Yep. And stay tuned. But we, we like we love we love fee- I love feedback. Feedback for me is everything. And I want to know what people are wanting to hear about and want to uh, learn about. So yeah, we're, we'll uh, we're going to be interacting a lot more that way. Doing some a lot of Facebook Live live video stuff. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. we're yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good year i'm excited for the plans that you guys have uh, have set up and you know the next few days we're going to kind of refine those and create some goals with our marketing team so we have stay a goal tuned. to give patrick no privacy whatsoever well as long as i'm like able to stay here and and, <laughs> and, not, and not be on a plane all the time yeah, <laughs> yeah that'd be right. amazing yeah well, uh, let's, let's wrap see. it up. Yeah, I yeah. Think anything good. else? I think we pretty no. much covered it, right? Yeah, let's ra- let's wrap up the year. I mean, I, I hope you guys had a good uh, good holiday. Hope you are spending some time uh, consuming good, nourishing food and spending good time with family. But let's gain uh, weight. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I can't. You know, the new year always brings new perspective. We always can look at you know what we've done in the previous years, and you know, not not in regret, but in what are the lessons and how can I improve on those and how can I make next year a better year? So I'm excited for that kind of sentiment that is, I would say in a sense, universal. Uh, But thank you. You know, thanks for listening. We really appreciate the support of of us and support of the the show. And, uh, and, I don't know. We, yeah, we wish you guys a, a, a happy holidays. Do you have any final words, Chunga? Uh, happy holidays, and thank you for choosing to uh, spend some time with us. We hope that, uh, uh, speaking for Pat and myself, we hope that this is something that you look forward to every single week. And uh, we hope to only go up from here. So keep checking back for sure. Okay, sounds good, everyone. All right, that's uh, that's it for today. We will see you on our first show of the new year in just uh, just a couple weeks. You've been listening to the Wealth Standard Radio Show, your gold standard in everything financial.